It was precious time with Hollywood's biggest star. An interview with Tom Cruise about his new film, War of the Worlds. There's no doubt the movie will be a success, with Cruise as the leading man and Steven Spielberg in the director's chair. But before we sat down, there was an unusual request. An invitation to a session on Scientology, the controversial religion Tom's been following for the past 20 years. So I went, and then I met him. And that's when I discovered there's another side to Tom Cruise, that when he's angry, the cool man of Hollywood can become downright icy. There's a saying in Hollywood, name three actors who can guarantee you a box office smash. Answer, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise. I feel the need, the need for speed. And Tom Cruise. Show me the money! For half his life, he's been the biggest movie star in the world. His films, even the bad ones, routinely rake in more than $250 million. In a business where the bottom line is the only line, Cruz is king. I, I think it's, I feel, you know how I feel? I feel privileged. That's how I feel. I feel I live a privileged life. At 42, he's one of the most powerful people in Hollywood, in control of everything and everyone he encounters. How are you? Hey, hey Tom. How you been? Man? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Long time. I know. Yeah, take a how seat. You 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 but today, that famous cruise control will be tested. You're stepping over a line now. Okay. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. I'm just telling you right now, put your manners back in. Tom Cruise is used to getting what he wants. He was still a child when he first set his sights on Hollywood. I wanted to be an actor when I was about four years old. Really? Yeah, four years old. I thought about it. It was the first time I thought of being an actor. Uh, I was living in St. Louis. That was the very first time I thought about being an actor. It just evolved. I wasn't necessarily thinking of this. I mean, I, you know, I didn't plan this out. This just happened. This boy from a broken home set himself a deadline to achieve success. And he didn't have to wait too long. In 1981, in his first film, Taps, the director was so impressed with the young Cruz, he gave him someone else's part. It's beautiful, man! Beautiful! You want answers? I think I'm entitled. He never looked back. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! In more than 30 films, he's given us some of the most iconic movie moments of the past two decades. I love you. You? You had me at hello. But off-screen, Cruz has devoted much of his power, influence and substantial wealth to the Church of Scientology. It's a controversial religious philosophy based on the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard. Scientologists believe we are spiritual beings in control of our own destiny and that therapies like psychiatry wrongly label individuals. The message struck a chord with the young Cruz at a time when he was struggling with dyslexia. I had uh, what, what absolutely they defined as learning disabilities, dyslexia. You That's know. what you would diagnose that you had? Sure, absolutely. That's what they do. They, you know, you've got ADD, ADHD, and you go, what is the solution to that? Well, there isn't a solution. And now today it's take drugs. They actually wanted to put me on drugs. My mother wouldn't let them back then. And then when uh, someone, a friend of mine, actually gave me this, you know, it's actually this picture book about suppression, you know, and social and antisocial personalities. And I was like, what is this? You know, I said, Scientology. I said, oh, I'm very interested. And uh, I, that's when I became a Scientologist, about 20 years ago. It has obviously had a massive impact on you. Oh, it was significant, you know. I mean, uh, you look at, uh, you know, as a father, as an actor, as a businessman, I mean, uh, uh, every level, you know, something, the, these tools that I apply absolutely every day. I've done my fair share of celebrity interviews, and often you'll be asked to meet certain requirements, like watch the movie that the star is promoting. But this is something new. Tom Cruise's office has asked me to come to the Scientology Celebrity Centre in Los Angeles to embark on a four-hour crash course in Scientology and what it's all about. 
Why then was it a condition of me talking to you today that I had to spend quite an intense four and a half hours in the Church of Scientology here in Los Angeles? Oh, you didn't have to. You could have said no. I felt I had to. Okay. Well, that's how you felt. Mm. People are interested in Scientology, and I I find that people wanted to know. Mm. Uh, They want to know about it. And uh, it's also, you know, there's people out there that want help and that need help. Would you also agree, though, Tom, that there's a perception out there that it gets bad press, cult-like secrecy controlling, and and you almost have to defend it? You know, I don't feel it's ignorance breeds bigotry. Right. Breeds racism. Okay. Uh, You have been there and you've seen it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you feel discriminated against when people say, this is what Scientology is, that you're a bunch on a lunatic fringe or whatever? Does that... Peter? Tom? No one's ever said that to me. But no, I mean that perception out there. Yeah, but that's not the perception out there. Mm. I, I, that is absolutely, uh, maybe from your perspective. This isn't my personal opinion. I'm just saying, how do you feel about that when people... Well, how would you feel? Oh, if it was my faith, I'd feel well, not, really... Not, not even your own faith. I, I find that appalling when, when people who don't know what they're talking mm. about say things like that. Mm. I think it's... Uh, I think it's appalling. I think it's appalling uh, that they're still burning synagogues in France. I think it's appalling how certain Muslims are being treated. I think it's absolutely appalling when we talk about freedom of speech and human rights. I think it's appalling that they electric shock people. Mm -hmm. I think it's appalling that they drug children. I think it's appalling that they say that there are no solutions for those things. I think it's appalling that people have to live a life of, of drug addiction. Okay, when I have personally personally help people get off drugs. It's obvious Tom Cruise is a passionate man, especially passionate when it comes to his own family. He's determined his adopted kids, Isabella and Connor, will have as normal an upbringing as possible. Your family life was was difficult. You were estranged from your father and your mum and dad were divorced. Has that had an impact on you as a dad, how you bring up your children? children? I'm hoping to. Okay, good. I hope I can. Good. Good. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I've I've had a, I've got a great mother and a very close family. And uh, it's something that uh, I always wanted to be a father, you know. Mm. And I think that one of the great things that we've done with our children is allowing them to be themselves. Is that hard? to give them a perspective that they are like the kids down the road, even though their parents are who you are? Here's the point. Everybody's different, Mm -hmm. Peter. I I don't buy into this whole thing of being normal. There's no such thing as normal. When you really look at someone's life and you look into their life, everyone has a story. Everyone has something that that is going on uh, that is very unique to them. So that, with regards to our children, it's... uh, you know, I've. I think they feel very fortunate, uh, for the life they have, and they're really good people. I'm really proud of them. Of course, the Cruz children are Australian citizens and spend much of their time here with their mother, Nicole Kidman. But it was when our conversation turned to Nicole that the cool man of Hollywood turned icy. Now, Nicole. Mm-hmm. When you were married, it was like you were an adopted part of Australia. Do you still have a, a connection to Australia? Yeah, because well, my children are Australian. You know, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I have a lot of friends in Australia. Uh, I love Australia. Was Nicole the love of your life? What do you What do you mean, Peter? You were married for ten years. I, listen, we raised children. I, uh, you know. <laughs> how, do you answer that? how do you answer that question? She's someone that uh, I, uh, you know, I plan on getting married again. You do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And having kids? Absolutely. But Nicole was a major part of your life and a love of your life at the time. I loved Nick very much. There's no question. Would you like Nicole to remarry? Yes. I want Nicole to be happy. That's what I want. And do you have a relationship where you, you talk, it's a parenting relationship, you know, and talk professionally about each other's why don't we? Why don't, listen, 
here's the, here's the thing, Peter. Yeah. You're stepping over a line now. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. I suppose they're questions Peter, though, that people want to know. Peter, you want to know. Take and responsibility for what you want to know. Don't say what other people. This is a conversation that I'm having with you right you're now. You're right. Okay. So I'm just telling you right now, okay, just put your manners back in. Do you think I was out of line? Yes, absolutely. Well, I apologize for that Good. sincerely. Good. I admired her, and I thought that uh, I wanted to meet her. Yet so seldom a week goes by when Tom Cruise's private life isn't very publicly displayed. Tom, does that mean well, you're going to ask happen. her to marry you? Does that mean you're going to ask her to marry you, Tom? In this recent appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show, he openly, and some have said over-enthusiastically, declared his love for new girlfriend Katie Holmes. Do you believe in your role that there is a place where the world does want to know about your personal life and there is a line that you have to draw? Absolutely. I mean, I know people are interested. And I don't have a problem with that. And I also don't have a problem to say, hey, listen, mm. you know, where I am with Nick is in a great place. Mm. I don't mind answering questions, but there's a way of phrasing something that is, that's polite and has manners and things that I say, you know what, I wouldn't answer that to, to someone coming up to me at a party. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem. Of course I know people want to know about my life. Yeah. But when I read so much about you, Tom, they, these are questions you answer. Peter, you want to waste your time on this right oh, now? I don't. Or do you want to ask some other questions? 20 years' time, where will Tom Peter, prove? Good. You want to move on? <laughs> Peter, come on. Let's go, man. And so we did. That our world was being watched. Get down! <laughs> Just get up! Get down! Get down! The Cruiser's new movie, War of the Worlds. A $200 million remake of the H.G. Wells classic. Teaming up with the most bankable director in the world, Steven Spielberg, Cruz plays a father trying to save his family amid an alien invasion. I love him as an actor, and he's a very underappreciated natural actor. I mean, he plays, you know, you know bigger-than-life hero characters in many of his films but he's never played a dad. And he's a great father. I know him more as a father than, I, than, than in a professional work, working experience. I'd known him since 83. And I, I, I knew Tom when he, when he, got his, when he, when he first you know, adopted his first two kids. And so I really felt that this part suited Tom to a T. Take care of our kids. Rachel, dad, sweetheart, I need you to uh, get your suitcase. Who's the star in this? Is it the aliens, the Martians, or is it Tom Cruise? <laughs> I, you know, I don't. I never kind of look at it like that. It's it's a story. It's a story about uh, this family. Uh, the aliens are spectacular. The tripods are spectacular. The sequences are spectacular. But at the bottom of any story, if you don't have the, if you don't have those characters that you want to follow as an audience, that's that's really what I invest in when I'm when I'm seeing a movie. Just take those old records off the shelf. It's been an extraordinary life so far. Cruz's wealth is estimated at $450 million and his 10% take from War of the Worlds could add another $100 million. But he insists it's not the fortune nor fame that drives him. I wanted an adventurous life my whole life. Um, I want to know people. I want to understand what life is about, Peter. And, uh, and I really uh, I want to help people. It's not something that I just say. It's something that I'm, I'm actively pursue, and, and that's how I feel. I feel privileged, truly. Tom, thank you. Peter, thanks, man. What I call an interesting interview. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, it was terrific. Man. Thank you. Thank you. you, you <laughs> it was terrific? God, you it was terrific. Even, when, even after you told me to learn some manners. <laughs> that's all right. You stepped out of line. I whacked you. We got, it, we got on with it. Good on you. <laughs>